Hi everyone, I'm Jody Barrows with The Square in a Square. I'm so glad that you've joined us today for this teaching class, for this webinar. We're going to talk about the Square in a Square system and visit three options, option three, option nine, and option 15. But before we get started with these new options that we're teaching today, I would like to take a moment to kind of review what we did last week in our first class uh, with those options, and then just kind of start with the basic trimming of what we do. Now, everything we do starts out with what we call the basic square, square in the middle, strips on the side. I spent about 45 minutes, maybe an hour, maybe 60 minutes in our last class at the very beginning going over the construction of this cute little basic square here. So if you haven't watched our first class, you can go back on Facebook or on YouTube and you can view that class and see all of those beginning teachings that we had. Now anytime you have any questions, you can just type those in on the chat. And then also remember that even after our live teaching is over, we have a quilt text hotline and it is 817-713-713. 2879. So 817-713-2879. And I love having that quilt text line because you can send me a picture and um, show me what you're wanting to do. And you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. And then I can even make quick little videos and send them back to you to help you get started or whatever it is that you're working on and that you that you're trying to learn and know. Now everything we do with this basic square is the square and a square system and we recommend that you start out with what we call the original ruler and it has this great little beginner book to go with it and then we have the the master book or the main book or the main core workbook and that is this one the square in a square and it's volume one we also have volume two which deals with diamond shapes and long thin points this is the options one through 17 and the options are the different triangle units that you get when you trim up your your block and then or your pieces not your block but your your options and then we put all these options together to make all these beautiful quilts i've got some great quilts for you to see today and we're going to break them down so that you can see these triangle units that we call options in the quilt because once you get this basic construction underway, then every quilt is at your fingertips. And when you learn the square and a square system, there's really not a skill level on quilts. You'll notice on a lot of patterns, they'll say beginner, advanced, um, intermediate, and so on. But with the square and a square system, every quilt becomes achievable. I always say my motto is that you can become the piecer that you've always dreamed of. So let's get started and let's review the basic shapes and then we're gonna get into looking at the different options and how to trim them and, and so on. So let's look down here on our mat. This is the basic square. So square in the middle, strips on the side. Now, when you trim them up, we have what we call an option one, and that means that you leave the fourth of an inch on all four corners. That's your seam allowance, so you'll get your nice sharp point in your work. And that is an option one, and we did that last week. Now the new one that we're going to learn today is option three flying geese and I want you to notice how it has a fourth of an inch on two opposite sides and it has a two step trim or a sharp trim on two opposite sides. And then we have the option four which we'll be doing next week in our next class and it is this sharp trim that we did here and we did that on all four corners. So option one, leave the fourth of an inch. Option three, you're going to do the sharp trim that we call the two-step trim, and you're going to leave the fourth of an inch. And then on option four, you're going to do that sharp two-step trim on all four sides. So I want you to notice, pay attention, that everything starts out with this basic square, and you either trim leaving the fourth of an inch, or you trim right up to the tip. And that's all there is to it. So there's only two ways to trim leave the fourth of an inch with the 90 degree angle on the ruler, or do the two-step trim, leaving it sharp. So let's look at what, how the ruler looks on this piece when we actually trim it up. Because this is really important, we're going to continue to refer to option one. That means leave the fourth of an inch on all four sides. We're going to continue to refer to option three which means sharp two, 
Liebeforth to, and we will continue to refer to the option four, which is the sharp trim on all four corners. You'll see this as we go through and make all of these units and all of these options. So let's see what the ruler looks like when we leave a fourth of an inch. So this right here is the original square in a square ruler. And here is the 90, and we're gonna push it right into the corner of that fabric square, right in the corner. The black lines go right down the seam. We went in depth on this in the last class. So if you haven't seen it and you're wanting more, go back and watch that class where we went into detail on all of this. So see, there's that fourth of an inch right there off of that point. Now, when we want to trim sharp like this, then we put our 90 in and we do what we call the two step. So here you can see the 90 on the ruler and here's one step, two step. So I want to put this line here on this seam and I want the end of that line to be nice and sharp right in that point. So normally I do the 90 and then drag it down two. But today because of my colors that I'm using, I'm going to just look at this line and the tip of that line and I'm just gonna snug it up right in that corner and then line it up. That way you could see exactly what I was doing and make that trim. And that is the sharp trim. Now you're probably thinking, well, what's gonna happen when we sew over here? Well, obviously when we sew here, there's our fourth of an inch and our point right where we need it to be. You can see it there and there. But when we're cutting through that point, like here we cut through this point, then we have to do that two step because we have to create a seam allowance in here because we're cutting these units up and we have to move that point. So you can see when you sew another piece onto here, it gets blunted, like you can see here and here. But when we come in here and cut through there to get our shapes, then that is our fourth of an inch seam allowance right there off of that point when we take this unit and re-sew it to the next piece. So all of this trimming of leave a fourth or two step is so that when we get to our final result, all of our points are nice and sharp and our work is smooth and flat, just exactly where it needs to be. So let's kind of review what um, we did in class one. So I think it's the middle camera we need so that we can see all of this. Um, no, I need to go farther over to the left. That work? Yep, there's great. That's great. Okay. Now what we're doing is that we're making all of our fabric pieces so that they can go into our option overview book because this is a great way to help learn the units. So get yourself a notebook. We talked about this last week, some cardstock, some glue, so that you can actually put your fabric pieces in here so that you have a, ref a reference or a referral to go to, and then actually doing them and just focusing on the options and not focusing on color or size or a quilt, then it helps you learn these. And we talked about how you're gonna be making new grids in your brain for shapes that you didn't learn in kindergarten. So this is a triangle unit, but we've got a lot of fabrics and seams going on in here. And so that is a new grid that you need to get in your brain so that you can start to recognize this option 13 and all of these different opportunities to have different color to create beautiful, beautiful quilts with speed and accuracy and to help remove the human element. So let's review what we did um, last week. And let's look at our pieces. We did option, we and we work on them in families. So let's get our camera. Those are the three we have. Okay, well, in our preview, we could see all of this. Uh, try the middle camera. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So last week, and, and we're learning these in families because the construction of making them are similar. So that's why we have them in families. It's just like in a family, you pa pass down different character traits. This trimming is a different character shape.
So this one with leaving the fourth of an inch, that's like passing down blue eyes into other family members, into future generations. Trimming like a flying goose is a character trait. Trimming with the sharp on all four corners is a character trait. So let's look at our option one. Our option one, we started with the basic square. We trimmed leaving the fourth of an inch, and that was our option one. So let's look at the option one in a couple of quilts up here behind me. So this quilt here is called Kisses from Your Beloved. It's a book that you can get um, off of the website. Squareandsquare.com is where you can find all of our different supplies that we use. But here is an option one here in the center of this one of this churn dash quilt. Beautiful, easy. In this one here, we used an option one here, 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 and here. So you can see how these units all go together to help build all of the different quilts. There's maybe two quilts in the quilt world that you can't make with the square in a square. It's just about every quilt that you wanna make. Then in this one here, here you see a large option one in the middle. Here they are in the corners of this one. There's four of them in this particular block. This is a big one right here, and we put the handles to the basket inside there to make that one a little more creative. And then in this one, we just have four patches and option ones. So let's look at the next step or the next generation in the family of option ones. So when we go back up here, basic square, trim it like an option one, leaving the fourth of an inch. We looked at that. So now for the option eight, you can take it and cut it like an X to get the option eight unit. So you can see how you can make borders with it, how easy it is to turn the corners. And all of this we taught in detail last week in our class. And then also look how easy it is to turn these and put something in the middle, plain square, four patch, embroidery, applique, whatever you want, put that in the middle. And those are some some choices you have for your option eight. So now let's look at the option 11, this one. So start out with your basic square, trim it leaving the fourth of an inch. So see how that DNA is passed down to the new option. And because you left the fourth of an inch here, you've got your fourth of an inch here in your final results of your option 11. So after you've trimmed it this first time, then you sew around it again. See how this is in the middle? And because of that fourth of an inch, you've got that nice sharp point there. So now when we go in and trim this, we're gonna two-step all of these corners. See how you have that sharp? So we did it to all four. So that is like the option four because you trimmed all four corners with that two-step. So now you're going to cut through it. Anytime you do the two-step, that means that you're gonna cut through there either now or later. So on this particular option, you do it now. And when you cut through there, both directions, you get this option 11. And we're gonna show you this um, up here in this quilt. This one right here is an option 11. So this red square with two black triangles and then the big triangle. And this is a flying goose, and that's what we're gonna learn today are the option three, nine, and 15. So we'll come back to this one here in just a moment, but there's your option 11. And we looked at some great quilts with option 11. So now, so when you look at what we've done so far for our class one, we had our option one. And then with our option eight, you trimmed it like a one, and then with an X. With your option 11, you did a one and then a four. And so now with this one, option 13, see how that DNA is passed down? It, now this one is gonna be a one for one also. So take this unit here that you've got trimmed up, sew around it again. You see the progression of all of this, and it's easy to learn it in a family and then you trim leaving the fourth of an inch on all four. So you can see how it was a one, and then you trimmed it like a four, 
and now you're back to trimming it like a one and you're going to cut it like an X so you can see how these come out. You're going to get four of them when you cut it like an X and all of this moves the points and the seam allowances where they need to be. And you think, oh, this is a lot to learn. This is a lot. Just learn it with basic square, trimming like an option one, and doing the two step. So if you can make the basic square, you can trim leaving an, uh, a fourth of an inch, and you can trim sharp. That's all any of this is, and then just the sequence of them. And the cool thing about learning this on online and with videos is, is that you can go back and watch it over and over and over again. So that's kind of a review of what we did last time. So let's look at our new ones that we want to make. So today we're going to learn option three, flying geese. Look how nice and neat they are. How you can switch up your colors and do whatever you need to do with your pattern. And then this shape here is an option nine. And then we have this shape here, which is an option 15. So option three is flying geese. Option nine is what we call the instant star. And you'll see why we call it that here as we get going. And then option 15 is mother goose because you have the wings of the big mother goose with, uh, of the flying goose with the little baby goose protected inside the wings of the mom. So this is mother goose. And then we'll talk about this, this one here, which is that mother goose. So this is where we're headed. So just like we had the progression before, we're going to have it here also. So we'll start with the basic square. We're going to trim leaving the fourth of an inch on two. We're going to do sharp on the opposite two, cut it in half, and there is our flying geese. So let's trim it. So let's do the fourth of an inch first. So let's go to, let me get it out of that glare a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we're going to push the tip of the 90 right into the corner, and that's going to leave the fourth of an inch. Do that on one side, flip it, do it on the opposite side, so a fourth of an inch and a fourth of an inch, and then we're going to two-step it, do that sharp trim on the other two. So we just slide it over. So that the second, uh, when your 90 is in there, you step it one, step it two, two step it over. Put it nice and sharp right in that tip. So it's nice and sharp. You don't want it blunted. Keep it square on the outside edges. We talked about that last week in depth, gave lots of good tips and hints. And now we're going to come through here and just cut it in half through the sharp trim. So you can see how the sharp trim is because you're going to cut through it now or later. And there you go. There are your really great flying geese. No, no uh, dog ears, no sloppiness. Everything is true and square and some great 90 degree angles in there. Good fourth of an inch off of your tips. Now, if you're sewing um, two or more flying geese together, when you press them, we press them so that it breaks the beak. So this is the beak of a flying goose. This is down a wing. This is a wing tip. And so when you trim it, 
you want to trim it so that that beak or that seam goes back towards the body. So when you break the beak, it's pressing it so that it goes back this direction. Now, the reason why we break the beak when we press is because it helps keep them all lined up nice and straight. See how nice and straight all of these little guys are flying? They're not kind of weaving over to the left or the right. So when you break that beak, see how that presses back towards the body of, a, of the owner of the beak, then that's like putting a bridle in the mouth of that little bird and it keeps him flying straight. So that's the option three flying geese. Now, these are not the proportion sizes here um, on to, for these to go together, but I want you to see how this option 11, when you sew a flying goose to it, you get a really cool little block. So if we had a flying goose on this side and one on this side, let's look at this particular quilt right here. This is the one that we were talking about where we have an option 11 with a flying goose on each side. So that is a great one there. And then I'm going to bring this one close over here so we can look at it and dissect it close up. This one is called Weather Vane and it is in um, just the individual pattern. It's not in one of our books. Let's get my handy little white sheets out so that we can break this quilt down. So here is the option 11. You can see the square with two triangles and the bigger triangle. That's the option 11. And then we sew a flying goose on one side of it. Then we sew a flying goose to a little corner square. And then that section is sewn on there and that makes that particular unit. And then in this quilt, we just use a rectangle or a sashing in between. Then the middle part of the block is the same rectangle with a square that matches. And then we have this down here on the bottom. So this quilt, even though it's small and has a lot of pieces in it, is very easy to make using the square in a square system. Now I'm going to show you one other unit with flying geese, and this is from a book that we call Hen House. So this is a hen house block right here. So you can see how we've sewn three flying geese together. So here you go. Sew three flying geese together. And of course, that fourth of an inch, when you sew, you're gonna get that nice sharp point. And just like this was a square in the middle with strips on the side, now this becomes our rectangle in the middle. And we're gonna sew strips on each side. See how this was a strip, this was a strip, this and this, and this allows these flying geese to go at an angle. Now I didn't bring any quilts to show you on these hen house units and how beautiful and easy the quilts are, but there are some um, other videos that we've done in the past year, look from August, uh, July or August of 22 to now, and anytime you see hen house, you're gonna see quilts made out of this particular uh, block. And so here you can do just simple flying geese, you can add them to blocks, or you can put them inside to be your middle unit and make more blocks um, at an angle with the flying geese. Now in this one right here, this one's called Prairie Claw, and it's in that black book that I showed you at the very beginning. And it's a quilt called Prairie Claw. And you can see here how we just have option ones with a plain square, so that goes together just like three in a row. And then we have plain squares with option one in the middle, so put three in a row. And then option one's in the corner with a plain square three in a row. So this is like a nine patch, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now normally getting all of these triangle units in a just a simple thing like that would be difficult to do. If you've ever tried to sew triangles onto the side of a square, it's not as easy as what you think, and therefore just the square and a square for doing option ones is really pretty amazing because you can get such nice units and get speed and accuracy. 
Then we've used flying geese on the solid square. So here's flying geese on the solid, flying geese on the solid, flying geese on the solid, and we've just used a rectangle and a little corner. This one's scrappy, but we've got some that we've done. Oh, this is probably one of the most common patterns that we've done over the past almost 40 years, and I've seen it in almost every design that you want to um, think about. Now on this one here, on this flying goose, so you can see how this was my center. Notice how I had the same color on two opposite sides and different colors on the other. Now when you trim this one up, you need to make sure that when you trim with the 90 that the black is on the right side. And then when you turn it to trim it, once again, when you put the 90 in there, see how the black is on the right side? And that allows you to move them around, whether you want them together or separate. The way that you trim flying geese can move the color around. And some of that is just experience and practice if you're doing your own thing. But in any of the patterns where we have to do that, we, we make sure that you have a warning. We always say, watch your color placement and all of that so that they will turn out where you want them to be. It's very easy to do that in the sewing of your basic square to put certain colors on certain sides so that they turn out the way that you want. So do we have some questions on flying geese? Well, the question is actually on the hen house block. Okay. Um, so this is the hen house. On the nose tip first or the long side first, or does it matter? It really doesn't matter where you start sewing your strip on the side. Um, I don't know that it really matters. Now, of course, when we did the basic square, we talked about how the first side you sew on is a long strip and the second side, the opposite side, is a long strip. So I guess it would depend on my, my strips I'm putting on, if I'm using scraps or whatever, where my long strips are, because I would start out. So if my long strips were this wider one, see how this is wider than this? Because this is a rectangle, so they ha these have to be skinny and these have to be big. Just think long side, you need, or the wider side, you need the wider strip. The shorter side, you need the, short, the shorter strip. So I guess it would depend on my fabric, whether I was working with strips or scraps, but there's really no rhyme or reason to why you would do it one way or the other. Okay, so let's look at, let's look at this red and white quilt. This one is called Turkey Tracks. And it is in the uh, black reference book that I showed you at the very beginning. And this one is very, very easy to do. And it's just flying geese. So we have a plain square with flying geese on two sides. And we repeat that for the four corners. And then just that sashing in between, like I was showing you on the weather vane one. And then we used the flying geese for the border. So just two colors and just flying geese and look how beautiful. I've seen this in the bold colors here. I've also done it with uh, a light background and like pink or blue for the, the pieces in here. But no, whether you do it scrappy with lots of colors or just do it with two colors, make the background dominant or make the block dominant, it doesn't matter. It's going to turn out beautiful no matter how you do it. And this one is in the black reference book and it's called Turkey Tracks. Now if you jump in to make this quilt, I will tell you that this flying goose is a different size than this flying goose. So don't get them mixed up. That's really the only curve in the road on that particular pattern is pay attention to the sizing of your flying geese because this one is a different size than this one, okay? Because we had to make it fit on the border, all right? Okay, another question. Whoops. No questions? Okay. So let's look at the next one. So we're just like, just like in the other cl um, class we built on this family, we're going to continue to build with this option three starting out at the beginning. So when you make your little book, you may um, and you put it on your cardstock, you know, make any notes on it that you need to make to help you remember. So flying geese, option three, two-step, two opposite corners. So two opposite corners, two-step. 
and then two corners leave the fourth of an inch. See, you're leaving that fourth of an inch on the tip. So anything that helps you remember what you're doing um, is put that on your little your little your little cardstock page. Okay. Now the next one we're going to do is option nine. So this is what it looks like when you get it all sewn together. So start out with your basic square, trim it like an option three flying goose, but don't cut it yet. Remember I said you're going to cut it now or later. So after you have your basic square and and you have it trimmed like a flying goose, then you're going to sew around it again. And this time when you trim, you're going to leave the fourth of an inch. So just like we talked about with the, the other class, how the options built out, let's look at this one. So here we go. So our option three, we've talked about it and how to trim it, starting out just like this. So now our option nine means that we trim like a three and then trim like a one, and then we're gonna cut through these points. We always know where we're gonna cut because it's this two-step. So here's where we have it trimmed up, leaving the fourth of an inch, and we're just gonna come in here and cut one time so this space in here is this seam allowance off of these points right here. So see how you're going to get two. Here's one and here's one. See how you can do those um, borders just like we talked about before, how easy it is to make that mitered edge and head back up the other side. So here's one color combo. Let's go ahead and trim this one. So this is what we're wanting to look like, and then we'll cut it in half. So on this, this one when we trim it up, this one we're going to leave the fourth of an inch on all four corners. So we really don't have to pay attention to anything crazy yet, but we will on the next one. So let's put the 90 in the corner. Now, because this is a rectangle, it's not a square because of this two-step trim, when you come in here and put your 90 in here and line it up, you don't have a grid line going through the middle like we do on the others. It will be right in between the two grid lines. And as we go around, we keep it square where we've already cut, just like we do on all of them. Leaving the fourth of an inch on all four corners. So, since I'm cutting it in half one time, I have to make sure that I'm cutting it through this blunted area, this orange blunted area, and that I will have a fourth of an inch off of that purple corner. So I'm going to the ruler where there's a fourth of an inch line. When you look at your ruler on three sides, there's a fourth of an inch line. So I'm putting that fourth of an inch line right there on those purple points and the ruler just goes right through the corners. And I'm also looking at the grid lines to make sure I'm staying square. It's really important to use your grid lines on the inside of your ruler. So you're just going to cut one time and separate it. Here's my fourth of an inch off of my purple point. So when I come back in and sew a fourth of an inch, my points are right here exactly where they need to be for me to re-sew it. Now, when you get ready to use them, you can do them like this. Now, obviously, if I was going to be making a border 
out of this. I would have different colors here because it would be so much easier just to do a rectangle and a flying goose than to do this. So anytime there's a seam, it allows you to change up colors. So you would do this option nine as a border when you're wanting these to be different colors. If you don't want different colors, then don't go to all this work of an option nine. Just do flying geese and rectangles. So hopefully that makes sense. And then look how easy it is to turn that mitered corner and go back across the other side. So let's look at some quilts up here. I love the um, option nine for what we call instant stars. So when you look at these, these are four of the units put together. So you can see one, two, three, four. And here you can see all the different colors and all of the stars. So this is what I'm talking about, about doing different colors on here. And you get the four uh, triangles in the middle with the flying geese. And let's look back down here for just a moment. So here you can see if you were going to put them together to make the star. And once again, with the colors that I did here, you know, all of these would turn out to be the same color. So if you don't, if you want this all to be the same color, then don't do the option nine. I hope that makes sense. I hope I'm making that clear. But that's how the units go together to make the instant star. Now this particular quilt right here has an interesting story on it that I'm going to tell you. So I have taught square and a square and traveled the world, literally, teaching this for almost 40 years. And when we would get to the end of the year, we would do um, the Houston Market and Festival, which was the end of October and the beginning of November. And I was always excited because during that January to Houston to November, I was teaching and working on patterns and projects and things that I had to do for work. So I always enjoyed that when I got through with Houston, I could go home and have six or eight weeks through the holidays into mid-January to work on what I wanted to work on, um, to decorate my house, to have Christmas and family and all of that, and I didn't have to think about work. And so it was always nice to make a quilt that was just, cr just my creation. I didn't have to worry about it. It had to fit into some class or some, you know, whatever. So um, this quilt I started after Houston and I thought, okay, so what am I going to, what do I want to do that I just want to work on my own? And so I went through, got home, went through my fabrics and I had a lot of back quarters of fabrics that, you know, you get these back quarters either in a bundle or in an exchange or, but we, we always called them dog fat quarters because they were like, what am I going to do with this piece of fabric? It's not really what I love or what I like or what was I thinking when I bought it or you know some of that kind of stuff and and scraps and fabrics left over from other things so I pulled out all of my dog fat quarters I cut them up to do this instant star I used a bunch of scraps I have two different backgrounds in here the the background of the star is all the same but the sashing is a little bit different because I didn't have enough background to do both when I got finished with it. And so I get the block all sewn together and I'm quilting on it. So for the next year, when I start traveling and teaching, I'm taking the quilt with me and I'm hand quilting it. This is all hand quilted. This is back in the 90s when I hand, 80s and 90s when I hand quilted everything. So I was actually setting at Houston the next year and one of the magazine editors, which I knew well, she came over and she said, oh, that's a beautiful quilt. She said, and you're hand quilting it. And I said, yes, you know, this will be my one that I've worked on all year. And she said, well, is this going to go in a book? Have you published it? Are you teaching with it? What are you doing? And I said, no, this is just one for me to do what I want to do. I don't have any parameters I have to work in. I'm just doing it and having fun like, um, I'm going to say like I used to do when I didn't have to think about patterns and teaching. And she said, well, I really like it. She said, I'd like to use it in my magazine. Well, this was McCall's Quilting Magazine, one of the premier quilting magazines. 
And um, she said, when will you have it done? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm hand quilting it. I don't know when I'm going to have it done. So now this quilt that was supposed to be a relaxing quilt has become a work quilt, and it now is going to have a deadline because the magazine editor of McCall's Quilting wanted it. So I, I told her, I said, well, let me quilt on it for about six months, and then let's talk again, and I'll see when, how far I'm coming along with it. So I decided that I had to work on it about an hour and a half every day. So I would get up early, and I would quilt for about an hour and a half before the day started, and the kids were up, and all the different things that would go on during a day, and so that I could get it quilted. So I got it done. I sent it to her. Uh, she said, well, I really would like to put it in the December issue, and this was 1998. She said, I would really like to put it in the December issue of 1998. She said, therefore, I need it by August, September, whatever. So I was working on getting it done by that time. So I got it done. I sent it to her. Now, when you send quilts to magazines or they take pictures of different quilts, you never really know which pictures they're going to use, which quilts they're going to use, or where that quilt is going to wind up being in the magazine. And they don't give you any preview of any of it. You give it to them. They do what they want to do, and that's it. So I was so surprised when she sent me the magazines back and it was on the cover of the McCall's. So this quilt that was supposed to be my relaxing no deadline quilt and that I used all the dog fat quarters in wound up being a cover quilt on McCall's December 1998. So you never know what's going to happen with your stuff when you start out making it. So this one is the, the instant star and then um, like I said, I, I love this um, design so much, and it's so easy to do. Then I decided to do one that was just reds and greens. And this one is actually from, um, um, some, from some of my Pony Express fabric and some of my, um, I guess just Pony Express. This is all, no, it's some of the Abe Lincoln too. So in uh, around 08, 09, and around in there, I had the Abe Lincoln fabric, which was celebrating Abe Lincoln's 200th birthday, and then the Pony Express, which we did, which celebrated the 150 year anniversary of the Pony Express. So this one here is the instant star from there. Kept my backgrounds consistent, and my sashings on this one jump out a little bit more than the other one. I had background sashing with just a cornerstone. So you can see how it takes on just a little bit different look. And then in this one with the rusts and kind of the olive greens, here it is again. Uh, once again, two different backgrounds. And then you can see how the cornerstones here on these jump out differently than they, than they do here because of the sashing being a contrasting color instead of being um, a background unit. So those are the option nines. Do we have any questions? on option nine. I have one. I have a quilt that I need borders for. If I want to use options eight and nine, what is the length you can go before you have to make that corner turn? Well, you can do any size on any of these, on any of the options, and you can do any length. Now, borders are a whole nother class, and especially when you're working with triangle units like this one or like with the option eight. So the easiest thing to do uh, to make this as quick and easy as I can in this class, the easiest thing to do is to frame your quilt. So whatever size of quilt you have, frame it to get it to an easy measurement. So what that means is, is that um, you would put like a strip border on it to frame it to get the quilt out to an easy number, something that's divisible by two, three, or five. Because if you go bigger than that uh, of a measurement that's divisible, then your border's going to get too big and, and not really be proportioned correctly. So let's say that um, these were going to be, um, let's say that your triangle unit, the long side that you're using, that's the only measurement you have to work with is the long side of those triangle units. So get that to be a measurement, let's say that Let's say your quilt's 50 by 50. So five goes into the 50, really easy. So get your quilt to an easy size to work with. And then if these are five inches, and of course you have to work with sewn sizes, not cut sizes, then these will go in five inches, five inches, five inches, five inches, 
and they'll fit in there um, nicely. So um, just kind of quick and in a nutshell, that's, that's that one. So another question before we move on to 15. Okay, so let's just kind of make sure that we know that everybody's on the same page here. Okay, let's look down here. Okay, so basic square, trim like a flying goose, option three, leave a fourth two-step, sew around it again, and this time trim leaving an option one, cut in half one time, making sure that you're cutting through the two-step. Don't cut through the fourth of an inch, cut through the two-step, all of these two-steps, because you've got to have this point where you need it to be. So when you get ready to trim, make sure you're not distracted and that you're doing it um, correctly, okay? All right, so for 15, we're going to start just like this, basic square, trim like an option three, sew more strips, trim like an option one, sew more strips, and this time you're going to be cutting it in half getting these large rectangle units. So anytime we're cutting it in half, remember you have to two-step those corners to cut in half. So here you can see the two-step, the fourth of an inch. So it's just like a flying goose. This is just like a flying goose. It's a, it's a rectangle. It's got the big wings, the little wings, everything going in the same direction. So this is a three, meaning trim it like a three, one, trim it like a one, trim it like a three, and this time when you cut it in half, you and, and when you do your trim, see how this was the two-step trim sharp here? So these have to be the two-step trim here. You cannot do it here. The two steps have to be able to line up because you have to cut through there so that your points will all be exactly where they need to be when you sew it back into your quilt. So let's trim, let's look at this again, and then let's trim. So the three is just this, the nine is a three, one, and now with the 15, it's a three, one, three on the trimming. So that is the family, that is the DNA, that's what's um, passed on. So let's trim this one up. So the first thing I want to do is look to see where my two-step is, because once you trim a two-step, you're trimming sharp, and if you trim in the wrong place, then your block is ruined. If you trim in the wrong place the fourth of an inch, you can go back in and trim it and take more off, but you cannot put it back on. So when I'm doing these, I wanna make sure that I'm trimming my two-step first, and that's my curve in the road, that's where I need to pay attention and keep my eyes on the road. So here are the two steps, so that means this is a two-step and this is a two-step. So here's my 90 right in the tip, and I'm gonna step it one, two. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and sharp right in the point. And when I go back, I do have a grid line that goes right through that corner. Hand flat, and these are big trim offs, so I'm definitely saving those to put on the side of my square. So look how these would be big enough to go on here for my option nine. So you can always save these, especially when they're big. So now I'm gonna to go to the opposite side and I'm gonna two-step. And I do think it's important to do this two-step first because like I said, if you mess up um, on some of them, you can go back and fix them. But um, if you mess up on the wrong corner, you cannot. Okay. So there's my two-step, my two-step, my two-step, my two-step. I'm hoping that everyone's getting that. Let us know if you're getting it. So now on the other one, the other two, I'm going to put my 90 in here and leave the fourth of an inch, and I have a grid line that goes all the way through, and I wanna check my lines on my rulers and my fabric underneath to make sure that my block is staying um, as straight as possible. Now, when you do your two-step first, 
then it allows you to do your fourth of an inch last and your ruler is on here and all you have to do is slide it over and you should go right through the point, right through the point, and then your fourth of an inch line should be right here off of the points of that little baby flying goose, which are my purple ones. And cut it in half, so when you cut it in half, make sure you cut it the correct direction. You cannot go this way through the fourth of an inch. You have to go through those two steps. And there is my block, all beautiful and square. So in this particular one here, so here you see this one as a star. So there's my option 15, my mother goose. See the big wings? The big wings. The little wings of the baby, the little wings of the baby. So if we, we haven't done this option yet, but this is option 14, this is next week, but you can also do an option 11. So look how close the option 11 and the option 14 are. See how this is a plain square with two triangles and one? And so instead of a plain square, you have a half square triangle in there with the two triangles and the big one. So these are very much alike except for the center. This is an 11 and this is a 14. This we learned last week and this one we will learn next week. But see how you can put those on the corners and then use your option 15. And then of course here in the middle is just, they're sewn to a plain square. And then of course the bottom row is just like the top. So, this can be my star, just like this. Look at this beautiful blue, aqua blue, turquoisey star point, just like that. So, of course, you'd have to get your proportions all done correctly, but what if we did the instant star? This is just, you know, when you were a kid, did you play with blocks and Remember kindergarten, you played with blocks and triangles and all of that. That's just kind of like what this is. So look, if you did the instant star in the middle and then put the, with the nines and then use the 15s going around. And of course I would do my colors different than what I have here. And of course my sizing needs to be correct. But look how these little flying geese just keep popping uh, vertically and horizontally. Just amazing. So we're going to be done here in just a few minutes. That's our option 15. So if you have any last minute questions, get them in. But I want to show you one more quilt that uses option 15. So, of course, if you've been watching our, our webinars that we've been doing for the last couple of weeks and this last half of summer, we've been working up to Quilt Club Week. Quilt Club Week is the last week of October, so it's about two weeks away. So, two weeks from today, we'll be doing our pre-Quilt Club Week classes on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, we will start our Quilt Club Week. And so we want you to, to continue your learning and your education. If, you're, if you haven't signed up for Quilt Club Week, go and do that. You can go to the website, squareandasquare.com, and there's a banner at the top of the page where you can sign up for Quilt Club Week and get more information. And then, of course, we have our premium club. Our fall class actually started this morning. We had our very first class for our fall semester. And this particular quilt right here was our spring uh, 22 class. So we have fall class that goes from um, um, September to holiday time of November and then our spring class from mid-January to about Mother's Day, end of April, somewhere in there. 
just depends on how many classes we need to teach what we're doing during that semester. But this one was our border class where we started with our options. You can't see, but option one is down at the bottom. We had three different quilts that we look, worked on to show you how to use all of these uh, for borders for your quilts. And then we separated them with a solid so that that, that option really showed up. So on this one right here, we used option nine for this border here and then look at this one here this is the option 15 and look what a beautiful border it makes and of course you can make them any size but there is your option 15 and we did them so that all of the green or all of the big triangle unit came on the inside part of the quilt so it looks like these great green triangles uh, on the inside of the quilt you could do different colors and of course all those triangle units would pop out. You can do them so that it goes one direction and then the other direction. But these options are just very, very easy to make. They're very clean, they're very neat, and they go together to make almost every quilt that you want to make. Now I want to show down here just one more thing and then did we have any last minute questions come in? Okay, so this is like what I showed on the quilt up there to where the big triangles came together and touched and it made the bigger triangle unit and we made sure that those were on the inside of the quilt so it looked like kind of a, a set in um, triangle corners. But you can also do them like this and look how it makes that ribbon turn, how it gives you this shape and always did was flip up, flip down and it gives you this ribbon turn. So it really looks intricate. It looks like you've done a lot of piecing, whether it's for your blocks or for your borders, but you really just learn the system and then let the system do the work for you. I really want to invite you to Quilt Club Week. You're gonna have a lot of fun. You're gonna learn a lot. I wanna invite you to join Premium Club. If you join Premium Club, Quilt Club Week is a part of it. It's not an extra charge. It's included in your year subscription. And Quilt Club Week is uh, lectures, it's demos, it's in-depth classes. Um, if you, we've gone, we've had, I don't know, six or eight webinars just backing up from here to a couple of weeks. Go in and watch some of those. We've gone through quilts. We've shown you what we're going to be teaching. There's a lot of things in there that we're going to teach that we haven't shown you, but we've given you an idea of what we're doing. Also take advantage of our fabric sale. It goes to the end of September where you can get our brand new Paradise fabric, which is what you've seen me work with here in class today and last week in our option class. You can get it for $10 a yard. It's normally 14. It's the highest grade quilting fabric that you can get. It's just buttery soft. You'll love it. Um, I've been doing fabric for years and I'm very picky about it being exactly the way I want it. And that's why I do my own. I have my own fabric company called Square Textiles and we are able to design and create and make our own fabrics and, and have them exactly the way we want them. So make sure you take advantage of the fabric sale that goes to the end of September. Also, we have uh, free shipping on an order that's $150 and that can be fabric or books or patterns, anything. Go in and get your books, your rulers, your hen houses, your, um, your snowballs, you know, just go in and watch some videos and go to our website and, and look around. And we've got, um, got a few other things on sale on the website that I'll just let you uh, look for and enjoy. Remember the quilt text line number, 817-713-713. 2879 and uh, we'll get you helped. Um, uh, the quilt text lines have been really busy the last couple of weeks with everyone learning the system and getting geared up and asking questions and showing me quilts. I really do enjoy helping you and making the quick videos to get to you. So just because we're online doesn't mean that you don't have a teacher there to help you. I'm your, your personal quilting teacher or coach. We love to do it and um, I, w I want you to send me a text and ask for help. So the, the text line is for quilting help. If you have questions about technology, where to find a video, where's my order, um, does, when does my premium club expire, do I get quilt club week with my membership, any question like that, do that on an email. And that's um, the emails, we'll let you put those up there. You can do Jody at squareandsquare.com, or you can do Steve at squareandsquare.com. Steve's going to help you with the technology and the, the, any logistics or that kind of stuff. And just want you to keep learning, having fun, hone your quilting skills, and become the piecer that you've always dreamed of. 
So we'll see you next week on Monday and we'll do our last option class. We will do the options that start out with option four. So that's four, 10, 14, and 44. Notice how they all have fours in them. I love numbers. I wanna teach you how to use the options and the numbers.